Well, 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 hello there, everybody. It's been a long time. It's me, Mac Weldon. Let me ask you a question. You wearing underwear right now? I bet you are. Most likely, I'm catching you just going about your daily day. And that includes wearing underwear. Unless you're some kind of free spirit, I put that in sarcastic quotes. Underwear, it's good. Protects your pants from the rest of you. Now, here's the thing. My underwears that I make, they're better than anything that you're wearing right now. Now, that's, that's a boast, right? Or is it just a fact? There you go. Can't be a brag if it's true. I believe in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping, okay? I want you to be able to just go online, buy your stuff, get it shipped to your house, and then it's yours, that's easier than going to a store. You know what I mean? Uh, you gotta. Uh, you, you might say to me, "Hey, Mac, what about the time it takes to wait for the uh, items to arrive?" Well, do you live in the mall? No, you don't. Unless you're in that weird Americana mall in Glendale, California, where people have apartments at the mall. I, I don't understand it. I, why? You know, they got like. Music playing, fountains dancing, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's like dancing waters in some big fountain. Music playing, and people wandering around. A man selling ice cream, singing Italian songs. Do you do you hey do you, do what you like? Okay, I'm gonna live on my ranch. You live at the mall. Mac Weldon underwears will be the most comfortable underwears, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, and sweatpants that you will ever wear. I'll t I'll, I will make that claim to my dying day. If you want to visit me on my deathbed and say, Mac, I found a more comfortable hoodie. Well, you're welcome to do that. But I got one of them signs. Says, never mind the dog, beware the owner on the, on the, on the gate of my ranch. It's fun. Listen, I got a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial. Okay? The silver line. That... It's the, it's the tippity top of the line. These underwear and shirts are naturally antimicrobial. Now, I, folks, y'all heard me talk about this before. I despise microbes. I despise them. If I could wipe them from the face of the earth, I would do it. Science assures me some microbes are good. I, I, I have to take you at your word, but I ain't met a good microbe yet. Listen, y'all, I want you to be comfortable. If you don't like your first pair of underwear, keep it. I'll still refund you. No questions asked. That's your business. I, 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 I'm not going to ask you a question. I might advise you to go seek a, a mental health professional because you're crazy if you don't like my underwear. Now, not only do Mac Weldon underwears, socks, and shirts look good, they perform well, too. Working out, going to work, going on a date. Just everyday life. Playing video games y'all like to do. Go to MacWeldon.com, get 20% off using promo code PFT. Okay? Do that today. You're gonna need some new underwear. If you don't need it now, you're gonna need it soon. That's just that's just the way of the world. But I mean, guess what? You're gonna find underwear that's gonna change your life at MacWeldon.com and get 20% off using promo code PFT. Bless y'all. I ran, I ran all the way over here to welcome you. Welcome everyone who was standing there waiting for me. Or sitting there. Or lying there. If you're lying down and listening to this, oh, friend, you have figured out how to live. How, when did we get into this thing where you had to stand up to listen to a podcast? Who started that? And how come no one's doing it but me? I've compared notes with a lot of friends in this new, what, what I'm assuming is a new trend, of lying down to listen to things. I, look, it's different. When I was a kid, here's what you did. You stood up at school every morning to say the Pledge of Allegiance. You remained standing to listen to anything that was said. You got home, you were exhausted. 
Everyone had varicose vein problems by the time we got to sixth grade. You should have seen our legs. And you could because we all had to wear little short shorts. We were wearing sailor suits, all of us. I was homeschooled. And a bunch of kids from the neighborhood would just wander in. Because we only had classes on Saturdays and Sundays. My parents were very busy. They had a beer can collection. And so Monday through Friday, they were out there looking for rare cans. Now, here's the thing. If you can find in the trash, and this was back in the days when there was no such thing as recycling. Nothing was ever used twice. Not a single thing. You had to buy a new pair of shoes every day. The shoe industry, you think they make money now, but back then, they had a stranglehold on the American people. Sometimes literally. Sometimes you'd go in to buy a pair of shoes and they'd grab you by the throat (laughs) and they'd tell you your flaws to your face. (laughs) But what could you do? You needed shoes. You're going to walk around barefoot? No. It was against the law. Laws are different now, guys. You couldn't take off your shoes in public. Now people want to be able to breastfeed all over the place. Why can't we go back to the way things used to be? Where everyone had to wear shoes all the time that they had to have bought that day so they could take their kids to homeschool where they stood all the time. Did we wear hard shoes when we were standing all day at school? Yes, we did. The hardest of shoes. They were made out of very unforgiving materials. Not like, you know, the the Dutch people with their wooden shoes. Is that real, by the way? <laughs> like, I know, I know that you can see wooden shoes and you can, you know, people have them displayed in their home or whatever. And there's, it's depicted in art, but what? <laughs> People walking around for in life. What? There are so many materials. Was somebody just embarrassed for the person that came up with them? Like, oh, uh, you know what we should do? This will keep shoes from wearing out. Make them out of wood. Uh, sure. Yeah, that makes it. There's a certain logic to it. Well, surprise, I've done it. Here's your pair. Thought we were just talking theoreticals here. I didn't realize. Gone ahead and made the prototype. Not just the prototype. I made a pair for everyone in the country. If I'm honest, I had some help from some elves. I fell asleep so early into the job. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneity Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a podcast where I invite a special guest onto the show. We have a free-form conversation inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then I invite some improviser pals onto the program, and we do a narrative improv. That is one continuous story as opposed to unrelated scenes. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's piano talk. He says hello. He's not speaking to you. He's asked to relay everything through me. I do not want to be the referee here, but what choice do I have? I've made a pact with Satan. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, you will recognize... Why do I say recognize when this is audio only? (laughs) Hey, how, how good are you at picking out voices? Hey, do you shut your eyes when you watch your favorite shows? If so, you will recognize our next guest from the hit HBO series. I almost said television series, but of course, HBO, not TV. It's HBO. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, you know him from Veep. Please welcome to Spontaneity Nation, Sam Richardson. Hello. Sam, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Some polite applause yeah, thank from you. unseen people. <laughs> it could be just me echoed. Sam, I have a question. Have you ever been on a podcast before? That's my first question. I have. I How have. many times? Oh, like upwards of four. 
Oh, uh-huh. lucky number five <laughs> mm-hmm. happening right now. Sam, I have a question for you. This is from our previous episode's guest. Are you curious as to the identity of our previous episode's guest? I, I am very curious. Well, then I would direct you and the listener to howl.fm, where you can access the Spontaneous Nation archives. Hours of listening pleasure await you. Ooh. Sam, here's my question. <laughs> Not my question, but the question that I am asked to ask you. My question is, define magic. Ooh, it's more of a command. Well, it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> what does that word mean to you? Wow, that uh, means a lot to me, as a matter of fact. Uh, as a matter of fact, just yesterday I was at a Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Is that so? It's so, so. Now, there was a ton of magic going on, I would imagine. Just nonstop magic, really. <laughs> like, you're looking around, you're like, okay. <laughs> you know, they're assuming that you have an understanding of it. And Are you a Harry Potter fan? I am a Harry okay, Potter fan. Okay, that would explain. So yeah, that's why that's why I yes. showed up. Now, did you did you go there by yourself, or did you bring someone with you? I brought someone with me. Also a fan of Harry also Potter. Also a Harry Potter fan. Okay. So then we kind of like made our way around the uh, the Wizarding World, <laughs> as it were, as it were, Ollivander's wands. <laughs> I'll take your word for that. Gringotts gold. What does that mean? That's a bank in Harry Potter land. Okay. You just, I don't think it was really there, but I wish, I wish they have ATMs in there that were. Exactly. I mean, they should go all the way themed if they're going to do it. Yeah. You know? Every single aspect. Everything. (laughs) Was this your first time at the Wizarding World? It was my first time. Okay. And it was a grand time. I'm inspired to to go to uh, the the Big Kabang in uh, Orlando. You know, because in Orlando, they have like the... It's even bigger? It's even bigger. It's like two lands <laughs> of magic. So it's everything from the one here plus a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, Were you a fan of magic when you were a kid? I, I you know, I absolutely was. You know, I, uh, in, anytime like a magician would like kind of... Even, even like a magician who's like, everybody's like, oh, enough. He does his tricks. I'm like, ooh! <laughs> You see that? Where'd that coin go? <laughs> and I'd just be like, I don't know where these coins are going, but I mean to find out. Did you Did you ever attempt magic? Did you learn magic tricks? I, uh, I, I, can, do, I can do a magic trick, which I'm sure will be great for the listeners at home. Sure. All right. Listen, let me, I will talk everyone through this magic trick. And you bring out, what are you, what are you taking out? You're taking out stuff my, from your wallet. My, my, yeah, my, this is my driver's license. Okay, driver's <laughs> I license. I don't know if it'll work with this. <laughs> oh, so he's holding it. His- oh! So Sam has held the driver's license in his hand uh, very presentationally. He he uh, holds it uh, in his palm uh, with the uh, with the, the hand the side sort of uh, horizontally, um, displaying it to us. Then he waves his hand, and it has disappeared. He waves his hand; it has reappeared. And this is a classic card trick that you have done with your driver's license. Indeed, a perfect depiction. Now, is that the one trick that you can do? That is the one trick that I can do. <laughs> now, are you a member of the Magic Castle here in Los Angeles? I am not, but I aspire to be. Now, you know, one of the ways you can become a member is you've, if you perform a magic trick for them. Uh-huh. I, yeah, I did know this. <laughs> I did know you, this. You did or you I've, did not? I, I did know this. Okay. I've spent some time in the Magic Castle. Yes. A friend of mine, Joe Kelly, loves... Just loves the Magic Castle. So whenever he's in town, we ain't all more there. than you. More than me. Okay. Even well, I mean, he loves the Magic Castle. I love magic. Right. You know. <laughs> so I think he loves the structure. I love the. He loves soul. the actual building. <laughs> he loves the building, just the brick and mortar <laughs> of it. He's a big fan of. Was part of uh, your interest in magic when you were a kid? Was it the the showmanship of it? Was it the the showbiz aspect? I think so. And like it was the showbiz. Show, like I, you know, a magician has a certain je ne sais quoi. I won't say suaveness, but they some of them do. Some of them do. Some of them sure do. Especially to a child. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> well, wow, this guy seems cool. <laughs> this guy seems cool. I'll follow him around the earth. <laughs> He's got a cape on, man. That's the greatest. <laughs> Or robes. What were the What were the other sort of uh, uh, show busy occupations like that that you found yourself drawn to? Uh, like a kind of like a Chuck Norris kind of. Sure. Uh, well, I say say Chuck Norris off of the my knee, but uh, Jean Claude Van Damme is who I was like. We got to be him. JCVD. Yes, JCVD. Can you do the splits? I can do the splits. <laughs> Are you serious? I haven't done them in a long time, but like that was a goal of mine, and I did it. <laughs> I did it. I what, achieved it. How difficult was it to get to the point where you could do that? You got you got to do it at a young age. <laughs> 
you got to get into splits early. <laughs> right. Before, before all the things set in, you know? Because once those hips are set in adulthood, I don't think they'll go back. <laughs> Yeah. When is the last time that you have done a split? Last time I did a full split? Yeah. Like on purpose split? On purpose, yes. And then give me the accidental. And then give me the accidental. Yeah. I'll take them in order. <laughs> last time I did a full split, uh, I think me and my uh, my lady's time were like running from some international thieves who were shooting guns at us. And uh, it was an explosion Same. that happened behind me. I jumped Same. and I landed between two barrels. Same. Okay. I'm, Same. I feel as if you're fibbing. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. I'm just kind of expanding. Uh, I, I used to do used to do musicals and play in high and plays in high school. Right. And we would so hmm, we would do uh, we did good news and my specialty. Sorry, which one is good news? Good news is. Uh, it sounds familiar. To, well, I never did that one, but I but it sounds familiar. It's to me. where the songs like uh, "You're the Cream in My Coffee," or, you know, classic. Everybody knows. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> oh, so it's like a really old one. It's like a really old, like a one. depression era kind of. Yes. You're the cream in my the coffee. coffee. <laughs> the, my stew. You will always be my pussy. I'd be lost without you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, or that's yes, that's good news. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm always like, is that bye bye birdie? Is that good news? I did both, uh, <laughs> but in the chorus, I, I have a specialty. Also did uh, Damn Yankees and uh, West Side Story. Just go through the whole high school. There list. we go, absolutely. Uh, and my specialty, I'm gonna get back to it, is uh, mm -hmm. the jumping splits. Oh, now this is not for the faint of heart. Sure isn't, because I'm talking about just a lot of things can go wrong. Yes, you know, it's, it actually is very dangerous. It's incredibly dangerous. Yeah, it is. And uh, first off, it's an <laughs> offensive move used to to fight. I that's that's where I came up. That's where I that's how I happened into it, because you know it's a jumping double kick. Oh, sure. But then, like, which, you know, but very, you have to very hard to set up. Yeah. You, you have to land. Yeah. You have to have people standing exactly <laughs> where they need to be to strike them both in the face. Right. Or chest or abdomen. And then, ideally, you would land lower than they are. Exactly. So, they, they because let's, let's say their recovery time is so fast. <laughs> exactly. Like, that guy kicked me in the stomach. I'm going to punch him right in the face. Exactly. My face is down here, dude. You Sorry. Missed me. You've, you've missed with a swing. <laughs> Sorry. Double uppercut. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. 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 You know the score. You so know. in good news. In good news, I would <laughs> do uh, uh I would do uh jumping uh splits kick. Mm. They're like, Sam, got a big task for you. We have these uh like five foot high uh like not pillars but like platform things. Mm -hmm. We're like, we're gonna have you jump. Uh over kid, uh, do splits kick, oh, and land in front of him, and uh, do it. And people in this room are already shaking their heads. <laughs> if you think it uh, went well, you're absolutely right. I nailed it. No, it really? I really, I did. I did. It was the greatest. <laughs> I've been living off of this glory for years. And of course, <laughs> people went insane. Ape yeah. crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone <laughs> lost it. It's a this is a very proud moment. What year was this? What? This I guess this Freshman year would have been. This, no, this would have been like sophomore year. This would have been two, oh, okay. two thousand. All right, right there on the Y two K. So then this is when Sam becomes a superstar at school. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like oh, and I went to an all boys Catholic school. So <laughs> what is valued or cherished more than a fellow who can? Jump now, and do the splits. That is when it was very exciting when they would bring the girls in from the other schools to play the female parts. Yes. yes. And exactly why I got into it. Absolutely. Honestly, I was. Uh, Makes perfect sense. You know, yeah. I, I went, I, I was going to go to a uh, boarding school in England, actually. Really? My parents are, uh, were going to like move to Ghana. Really? My, my, <laughs> just sounds like I know where. My mother's from Ghana. And so my parents would jump, uh, would, would jump and travel around a lot. Uh, so like we got to high school. It's like oh, we're we're moving to Ghana. You can go to boarding school in England. I was like, what? Uh, okay, <laughs> sure. How are those things related? You know, <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's closer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But then my parents, being so spontaneous as they are, 
Spontaneation. Uh, just a little <laughs> plug. And if you don't know what you're listening to, I thought I'd name drop the show that you're listening to. It's pretty close to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're uh, very spontaneous. So first they're going to move to Ghana. You're going to go to English boarding school. Then they're like, eh, you they're know They're like, what? psych. <laughs> We're not going but you happen to have t- tested into like these schools, and I did test because all my friends were I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do this. And I tested, I got into the school, U of D Jesuit High School mm-hmm. and Academy, established 1877. Um, <laughs> what was their motto? <laughs> uh, men for others. Men for others. Men for others for God. A M D G, Ahmed de Glorium. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Did you take Latin in school? I didn't. I took French. But school. Latin probably was on offer there. Yes. Yes. Because, you know, Catholic. Absolutely. Uh, and Jesuits, too, and right? Jesuits. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so I, I, was, I, was, I was talking to my friend on uh, AOL Instant Messenger, which was a popular thing at the time. Uh, <laughs> and my friend Hansa was like, oh, uh, I was like, Hansa, I'm not moving to Africa, uh, to England, turns out. It's like, oh, great. Where are you going to go? I'm going to go to U of D. Oh, wow, Sam, that would be great. How do you... Uh, how do you think you're going to get used to the uniforms? I'm like, oh, uniforms. <laughs> Annoying. Okay. Well, I guess I'll get used to it. How are you going to get used to no girls? And I, like, had a small flip out. <laughs> Did you not know? I had no idea. I <laughs> was oblivious. I was 14 years old. Uh, just hit puberty, like, maybe a little bit ago. So mm-hmm. I was, like, really looking for I went to a small middle school with, like, six, 16 kids, like, at the most in my class. Wow. So I was like... Let's go and diversify the uh, relationships here. Absolutely. Let's kind of meet some people. You had dated all the girls in this. Every school. single one of them. Kind of, <laughs> you know, you were encouraged to. It was a friend, <laughs> friends, were encouraged friend school. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, but was the was this school, the, the Catholic school, was this your parents' idea? It was their suggestion? It, it was like, it was their suggestion. And right. my friends, a lot of my friends from school were going there. Right. So it was like, nah, that seems... No brainer. Legit. You yeah. know, it's a nice school, Catholic, Jesuit. Yeah. And the idea of a single sex school, you know, that's not a thing. That's, <laughs> I couldn't possibly. Yeah. I've been to school. I know what school is. I, I know what school is. I won't even ask. <laughs> I would, why would I? Why would I even inquire that? So, so. Like, uh, and I'm like so depressed. I'm like, uh, how will I teach myself to be a young Lothario <laughs> without anybody? It's so, a Latharat. So then when the girls would show up. So then the girls. So I'm, I'm at uh, a shot put and discus uh, <laughs> uh, uh, rehearsal, rehearsal <laughs> as, as it were. <laughs> you were at sports rehearsal. I was in sports rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> just going through a run through. And uh, a bus pull, pulls up and it's just like. A stream of girls running around by that thing, <laughs> and like I'm spinning around, surrounded by flowers. Right, and I'm like, I gotta go find out what this is. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go find out what this cover is. for me. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> so I, Throw I, one of these heavy balls around. <laughs> Just trust me. <laughs> Say I'm Sam while you're doing it. No one will question. <laughs> <laughs> so I go in. They're like, we're here for play rehearsal or play play audition, play practice, play we practice. Say, yeah. They say play play I practice. Remember, I remember they're saying play, play practice. Play yeah, practice. I don't know why why because we'd said that too, and I yeah. don't know why we were not taught to say rehearsal. Right, that's, that's like <laughs> this is theater one hundred and one. It's just the first thing yeah. you kind of know. Play practice, play practice, yeah. and nobody corrects you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a college thing. So they were there for the for, for the auditions. Auditions, yeah. and I was like, "Well, I got to audition." And then, like, I got into the play. Oh, so you had no? You were a sports rehearsal guy all the way. All, always you sports had no rehearsal. ambitions to the theater. None. Wow. I, like what I, I I was like a like just oh, I, I'd seen Dreamgirls uh, maybe two years previous. Right. First show I'd like gone to, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Well, this is really fun and cool," but I was like, "Eh, never think about it again," you know. Really? Yeah. And then I uh, I got to that audi- audition. I got in, and I was like, this would be fun. Mm-hmm. And then I became, like, the thing I loved the absolute most. Right. You know? Because <laughs> uh, before that, you know, like, you're, like, the funny kid or whatever. That just meant that you could, like, quote the mask. Yeah. You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> that's a big. That is a big part of being a funny kid in oh. school is being able to quote other things. Can you say smoking? Yeah, if oh, you could do it, a, if you could make it a reasonable facsimile <laughs> of the, the famous thing that we all know, mm-hmm. it's like he's very funny. He's oh, he's very funny. <laughs> oh my god, he he said, "Can I do that?" And it was a perfect circle. <laughs> That guy's got the bones. He's got comic bones. Simple as that. <laughs> so then you realize very quickly, oh, I, I you know, there's going to be a lot of play, pa- play practice. And mm-hmm. so it's not just like the occasional dance where you maybe get to meet girls or something. It's going to be, we're going to be spending time together and, mm-hmm. you know, all that. Did, did romances blossom? You know, so, uh, some did. You know, and, and I meant for you specifically. For, oh, oh yeah, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but at least, at least, I, I witnessed them. Yeah, and sure. learned from that. <laughs> Sometimes that's just as important. Yeah, exactly. Learn by example. See what people are doing wrong. Say, well, I'm not going to do that, of course. Take the macro view. You know what I mean? So watch from the outside and say, ooh, I see both sides. (laughs) You know? When you're in it, it's up against your nose. You're like, what what am I doing wrong? What is she doing wrong? That's what you think. Right, of course. Mm -mm -mm. Of course. Mm -mm -mm. (laughs) We are all at fault. (laughs) Well, Sam, uh... Thank you for being here. I hope you will uh, continue to practice plays. Thank you. I hope you will continue to explore magic. I shall. And I hope you will learn to love a building like your friend loves the Magic Castle. Thank you. Sam, where can people find you online if they wish to find you? And what would you like to promote? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Sam Richardson. Mm-hmm. On very direct, it, very direct. No, no frills about it. And on, None taken. <laughs> <laughs> and on Instagram at the Sam Richardson. A do little you, frill. Do you like Instagram? Do you enjoy it? I do enjoy Instagram. It's fun to take pictures. Yeah, it is, and it's, like just a thousand words. It's Boom. exactly who has time for all these words? Not, not me. Now, yeah. this will be, uh, as people are listening to this, it is Monday, June 27th. Oh. Is there anything that you would like to promote for the people? Uh, just keep on watching Veep because it's on the air. There you go. Keep on watching it, guys. Keep on watching it. Yeah, uh, Maybe you haven't seen it. Catch up on HBO Go. Yeah. Or HBO, HBO, now. HBO Now. That's right. Steal your friend's login. <laughs> just, yeah. Steal but your H- friends. HBO I bet now. your grandma's not using all of her passwords. <laughs> or your auntie. That's right. They're just there. And the you. password's probably password. <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> or it might be your name, depending uh, on your relationship with them. Or your birthday. Or your <laughs> Grammy wants to remember. <laughs> you know. She never forgets the day you were born. Never. <laughs> her kids, eh. <laughs> they were a grand grandchild delivery system. <laughs> All right, Sam. Thank you so much. We will get a location from Sam during this break. And when we return, you will meet our improvisers. All this and nothing else. When Spontaneous Nation returns! Hey folks, a lot of people ask me, Blue Apron, what is their mission? Well, I'm happy to say I finally have an answer to that question. I needed context for what Blue Apron was before I could even answer the mission question, found out what Blue Apron was, then I also found out what the mission is. So here you go. Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. You think you can't cook? You can! Blue Apron makes it easy for you. They're trying to help you. Blue Apron achieves this by supporting a more sustainable food system, setting the highest standards for ingredients, and building a community of home chefs, or chefs, as I like to say. Blue Apron has established partnerships with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. And as a result, seafood is sourced sustainably... That's my favorite vocal warm-up. Seafood is sourced sustainably. Under standards developed in partnership with the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. That's right, the MBASW. Beef is raised humanely. Chickens are free-range. Pork is raised naturally. And regenerative... This is hard to say. This is one I don't do backstage. Regenerative farming practices are used for produce. Produce is not animals, it's plants. Also, Blue Apron can be delivered to 99% of the continental U.S. and 99.5% of food deserts. Can you imagine being in a food desert? It's not full of sand, it's full of not food. 
Because Blue Apron ships the exact amount of each ingredient required for a recipe, they are reducing food waste. And that you should do that too. You probably are you're making these recipes for for that are like for four people and you're only one person or two people. Are you two people? What are you doing cooking for four? Cooking together builds strong family bonds. This is true. It's like you see in a movie where people are having fun in the kitchen. Research shows that Blue Apron families cook nearly three times more often. That's a sweet statistic. How, how many times do you read a statistic that makes you smile? Those who spend a lot eating out at high-end gro- or, or at high-end grocery chains, or both. Maybe you eat out at a high-end grocery chain. Train? <laughs> oh, Paul. If you go to one of those high-end grocery trains... You're wasting money and fuel, train fuel. If you go to, if you eat out a lot, you go to high-end grocery chains, you know the ones that I'm talking about. You can now spend under $10 per person for a healthy, delicious meal. See, this is great. Meals available in June include spicy Korean rice cakes with snow peas and pea shoots, sweet chili ponzu catfish, uh, one of my favorite expressions, sweet chili ponzu catfish. And green beans with coconut ginger rice. New England style salmon rolls with roasted potatoes and chives. Okay? This, guys, this has to sound good to you. Blue Apron knows that when you cook with incredible ingredients, you make incredible meals. So they set the highest quality standards for their community of artisanal suppliers, family-run farms, fisheries, and ranchers. Whether it's Japanese ramen noodles, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, or heirloom tomatoes that you can hand down generation to generation. Blue Apron is bringing you the best. For less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. Okay? There's no way this doesn't sound good to you, my guys. <laughs> Each meal comes with a step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card and pre-portioned ingredients and can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. That's great. That is great. And then you sit in your home and you have a nice home-cooked meal that you cooked at home. It's home-cooked all the way around. Check out this week's menu and get your two meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash Paul, you will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. BlueApron.com slash Paul. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Have you ever gone over a friend's house to look at flowers and the flowers just ain't no good? I mean, the colors aren't vibrant. The petals are falling off and the, they didn't put aspirin in the vase or whatever. Hi, Cal Solomon, founding member of the seminal rap group Sugar Hill Gang here on behalf of Books. <clears throat> Rule number one of Mandem, no matter what you do around the house, you're likely to screw it up. I don't need to tell you that. Your wife told me. What can I say? She talks. We're having fun. Anyway, I can help you smooth out pretty much anything. Just send flowers from thebooks.com. No woman in her right mind would turn away a peace offering of Book's flowers. Oh, you're in hot water. Book's flowers are grown at eco-friendly farms on the side of a volcano. No, no joking around. A volcano. The blooms are larger and the colors are more vibrant. It's a better soil and more sun at a lofty 10,000 feet type of thing. This copy is fun. I'm having a good time. Yep. Gorgeous flowers from thebooks.com, hand delivered to your girl, say, we're still good, right? See, the idea is you got in a fight with your lady friend, and uh, she's mad at you, but flowers make it nice, you know? It's a charming, old-fashioned gesture when you bring flowers. I wonder if I could bring flowers to the members of the Sugar Hill Gang that went on to record without me and see if they take me back in the group. I don't know that that's going to happen. I don't know that there's still an, an extant rap group anymore. <laughs> Apologies don't cost much at thebooks.com because Books prices started at me at 40 bucks. There are no upcharges, no extra fees. Even delivery is absolutely free when you register with the Books. Here's the call to action. Get ready. Get ready, everybody. Batten down the hatches. Listeners of Spontaneous Nation save 20% off the bouquet of your choice. Just go to books.com and enter promo code PFT. That's B-O-U-Q-S dot com, promo code PFT. Books.com, promo code PFT. This is Cal Solomon signing off for Books.com, the flower place where you get flowers if you got in a fight. Oh, guys, that ad. Are you crying too? <laughs> Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation. We didn't go anywhere. What we did was we just sat here for a little bit. Sam left and then... 
Like a minute later, we just started doing the thing again. Is that too much of a peek behind the curtain? Is that boring, guys? Did I demystify it? Podcast um behind the scenes um uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet let's meet our friends from the world of pretends. Sitting right next to me. You don't often sit in this chair. I have. You the have the last couple times. Have I really you really liked it? So this so I'm wrong and I'm misremembering because we haven't recorded in it's, a while. And the last time we recorded, we did it live, so I wasn't That's even true. in the studio. That's true. But you're here now. How's it feel? Feels real good. Yeah. Annie Savage. That's me. Welcome back to the show, Annie. Thanks. How are you doing? <sighs> I'm all right. You got some allergies, man. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Sorry, listeners. You but might it, hear me doing some post-nasal <laughs> management. <laughs> post-nasal <laughs> management. <clears throat> Starring Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Now, uh, you did not have allergies before, you say. You say you developed them recently. Yeah, just this year. Just like the last three months, I can't stop blowing my nose. What a terrible Judas the human body is. It's the That worst. out of nowhere, it just develops an allergy. Yeah. No good. What if it's allergic to California? Then I have After to all this time? After all this time. There are a lot of problems here. <laughs> And it's the Santa Ana winds. They'll come along Those and they'll stir Santa up all Anna's. that garbage. It goes right up in your face. Yeah. And my face isn't handling it anymore. <laughs> my face is not into it. Do you worry about your little daughter developing allergies as well? Of course. Well, I do, but me. Hey, don't get mad at me. <laughs> of course I do. Oh my gosh, my daughter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, me and, and my husband Fred, we don't have Fred Cross, not Fred Savage. Fred Cross. <laughs> oh, it happens all the an time. An important distinction. It happens all the Wait, time. Wait, no, if you say, if people know your last name is Savage, but mm-hmm. they don't know who you're married to, and you say, my husband my Fred. My husband Fred, people They go, say, you're married to Fred Savage? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or like, more, it'll be peripheral. Like, I'll say Fred, and <clears throat> and then um, they'll, it's a conversation that they're not part of, and they'll like, lean over to my friend that I'm talking to and go. She married to Fred Savage. It's like, no. First of all, that's very rude. <laughs> you're having you're having a conversation with someone, and who is it? Someone else leans in and says, "Yeah, she well, because it's a, a social situation where we all are talking, sort Ugh. of." But they'll, you know, when I turn around for another beverage. What's worse than social situations? They're the worst. Really? Do we have to still keep doing this? Silencio. Who? <laughs> Speaking of Harry Potter. Yeah. You had you said you know from personal experience you have a correction to make. They do have a Gringotts ATM at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Of course they do. Universal Studios Hollywood. Because there's ATMs all over the goddamn place. There is, and everything is themed accurately. Yeah, uh, and that theme is we want to make money here. (laughs) So of course we have an ATM. Well, you won't find characters uh, walking around. There's no characters. Really? Yeah. The only characters they have are, because it's so, it's copyright. I mean, you won't, there's no like, take a picture with Harry Potter and Hermione, Hagrid, Dumbledore. Like, nobody's being those characters at all. But there's some, I guess because there's there's the movies and there's the books. And so, mm -hmm. chances are the kids have read the books, they've seen the movies. Mm -hmm. Maybe not because there's varying age ranges, right? Yeah, it's all over the place. But there's some characters you could get away with. You could put enough shit on them that it's like, it's the guy. (laughs) Well, they have the frog choir, which is in the films. And they have... What are you saying to me? They're frogs and people that sing. Frogs and people that sing. Yeah, the frogs are part of the choir. So it's a co-ed... It's choir, a co- where it's co- humans and, and amphibians. I don't know. And then they have the Triwizard Tournament with the Bobatons and the Durmstrangs. Of course. Oh my God. Of course. Now look, here's the thing. It's not that I, I don't want to be dismissive of this world that mm-hmm. people enjoy. It's just that I don't know about it. When you don't know about a thing and someone is using the specific terms of that world, it just sounds like the dumbest thing in the world. But of course, there's other stuff that I like that people wouldn't know about. And if I had to describe it to someone, I would become deeply embarrassed. <laughs> You're such a Slytherin. <laughs> I probably am, right? Go Ravenclaw. You you go Ravenclaw. I am. Annie, I'm looking away from you. Bye. This g- <laughs> This guy's hey, across. Great to be here <laughs> on the program. 
So I couldn't wait to sitting across get from Andy there. Savage is the more than punctual Victor Yared. Victor, welcome back. Hi, Paul. How are you doing, Victor? Good. We haven't been on we haven't been on the show together in a little bit. In on this show together? On, on this show together. Of course we work together on No You Shut Up. No, the last time we were on this show together, it was a live event. Is that still? I wasn't sure what to do with my hands. Because you don't have to think about that in a podcast. That's right. But in a live show, you have to do stuff with your hands. What did you end up doing with those hands? Uh, I waved twice. Mm -hmm. I think I pointed at you. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. And then the rest of the time was just kind of in my pockets. Just right in the, the old side. pockets. Yeah, just yeah. It was away. that was interesting. And all of your characters, I remember, were uh, sullen teenagers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From different countries. From to different be fair, countries. There were accents. There were a lot of accents in that episode. <laughs> the hands just stayed. That was that was our episode with Susanna Hoffs. I do not recall the episode number, but go look that up. If you look yeah. it up by guest, you'll find it. That was a lot of fun. Live there at the Largo. Remember that time? Yeah, no, I do. I think I've demonstrated that I do. Uh Expecto Patronum. <laughs> Are you versed in the world of Harry Potter? I'm no muggle, Paul. The WW of HP? Of course, everyone at this table, except for you. Now you're... you're very well versed. I guess that's true. We'll find out in a second. We're going to find out. <laughs> but you are, you are a parent. I am. In I'm... loco parentum. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you have... <laughs> How many children do you have? I have three daughters. So it's too many, Victor. I know. I've got two <laughs> eight-year-olds and a six-year-old. Right. My, my eight-year-olds are non-identical twins. I always specify that they're non-identical. Not that there's mm. anything wrong with identical twins. But, but people I'm, assume. People assume, and I'm just glad that mine are, are different because I just think it's funner for them to have an, their own identity. And not, yeah, but they still, they still have a twin thing going they on, They still right? are up to tricks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just can't, you know, disguise themselves as each other. Right. Yeah. It would be difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so they are, they're Harry Potter fans. They're, well, so they are at the age now where they can read the books right. um, for the last couple of years. And so they started reading them and they love it. And they were so excited to go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, which we did mm -hmm. twice. Mm -hmm. But we had to stop them. The books get really dark. I don't want to sure. give things away to you or any of the listeners who have not read them, which is probably... Everybody's read them. But, but you kind of can't avoid hearing about them, and so I'm aware but, of some of the darkness. But things get dark, and, and characters well, they, you love. Hey, how about this? They start know. out a little dark, where the kid uh, has to <laughs> in sleep basement, in a yeah. closet. True. <laughs> Under the stairs. However, they get progressively more intense. Yes. And so, so I stopped them after three books, and I read the fourth book to them, mm -hmm. which they were okay with, but I'm afraid to go on to the next one. Because it's get too intense. super dark in number five. I, I heard that number five is a lot like the big short. Is that correct? Uh, without the uh, financial stuff or the characters from the big short. And it's uh, and very different. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not, no, it's not at all. I was misinformed. Yeah, I thought they got was. really into the financial aspects. It's of a lot more like, uh, you know, that movie Inside Out? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's much more like that. <laughs> this is the one with Kevin Klein. He is uh, <laughs> he's a teacher and he realizes he's gay. I think you are thinking of a fish called Wanda. Every time, <laughs> every time someone says Inside Out, I think of that Kevin Klein movie, which I believe is called In and Out. Which I always call Inside Out, In and Out. I finally got it right today for the first time. <laughs> oh, Look what a that. wonderful day! I'm glad that I was here Full for it. Circle. <laughs> but now you like the books yourself. I do. I did enjoy the books. I read them when they they came out, mm. and I've seen all the movies. We have them all, you know, on DVD. So your wife, she into this. She's into it, man. All right, man. Sorry, I have no allies for you. Hey, man, that's cool. That's cool, man. That's cool, man. <laughs> I like that character. He's a pretty good guy. He's pretty cool. <laughs> He's fun. Victor, I'm going to look away from you. <laughs> okay. Sitting right across from me. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Whoa. He got an R2-D2 shirt on. Beep, boop, beep, boop, boop. Now, <laughs> why does R2-D2 look... He looks fucked up. Because what is going on? He's an amalgam of many different images from the Star Wars universe, Paul. Oh, I see. It's a mosaic. Is that right? Sure. <laughs> why not? It's a mosaic of R2-D2. I can't wait to Expecto be corrected. mosaic. -um. I can't wait for someone to write to me to correct me on what a mosaic <laughs> is, even though I did not say it. But that is what happens on the show, is that people <laughs> feel the need to correct, make corrections directly to me. Yes. Um, now, it looks like, yeah, it, it, it's it's hard to it's hard to describe, but it's R two D 2s frame. But then there's there's D all of the details. I don't know about pictured. this shirt. It's one of those shirts. I don't know about this shirt. People have to put their face basically directly into my belly 
to understand what's I happening. I'm not going to do that, Hal. Uh, well, I'm welcoming you by wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> this is an invitation to Bellytown, Paul. Are you a Harry Potter fan? Um, I've read five of the books. And That's a it, lot. It took so long for six to come out after mm-hmm. I read five that I forgot <laughs> some important details. And in reading it, I was like, I'm lost. I've seen all the movies. Uh, I appreciate them. I'm mm-hmm. not a big, I don't know what house I am. Um, and I wound up at the <laughs> Wizarding World of wait, Harry Potter. Wait, 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 yes, wait, wait. go ahead. What do you mean you don't know? You can just make it up. I mean, but it's like There's a no thing. There's no science to it. I can <laughs> no. Beg to differ, Paul. <laughs> beg to um, differ. <laughs> excuse me. You see? You see? This is what you're inviting. Excuse me. <laughs> it's like somebody doesn't really know the what? rules. Have you not? <laughs> Magic. What, this- what house are you? Ravenclaw. What house are you? Uh, Gryffindor. By the way, go to the sorting hat, Paul. You'll find out. Pottermore. What do you have to tell the sorting hat in order to find out? I lied. I was Hufflepuff. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's like the nerdiest one, yeah, right? it's a little bit nerdy. That's like asthma Don't kids. say that to Hufflepuffs because they will get mad. Sure they will. But they're all like inhaler kids, right? That's how I always thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're Ravenclaw, which is the coolest sounding they're one. They're smart. Super smart. Yeah. And then Slytherin, the evil house that they have for no reason. Why is there an evil house? It's not an evil house. But it's, it's where like, all the evil mes- kids It's where all from. the evil kids go. And it's, it's called cause, Slytherin. Because they're crafty. <laughs> crafty. People love being slit. They love showing their house pride, I have to say. I bet they do. I bet they do. I see it a lot. A lot of scarves. So you don't, you don't know. <laughs> I don't. But I, let me tell you a little bit of magic right now that you've made happen, Paul. Sure. You've reunited Victor and I after 15 years. Yeah. What? Is that time. so? That was the yes. last time. And I you have not done this show together before now. We have not seen each other no. in 15 years. What yeah. did you do together 15 years ago? I need answers. We basic met, improv. Yeah, basic improv with the ground lease. <laughs> you had just moved from New York. I just moved And down. I had just moved wow. from Philadelphia. Wow. We continued our friendship after the class. Mm-hmm. We did some sketch mm-hmm. together. Yes. Okay. And then... We went our separate ways. We did. But you have not seen each other. Did you say you have not seen each other in 15 years? That's correct. Yeah. This is very exciting, guys. I'm glad I could make this happen because I did it on purpose. (laughs) I bring people together, (laughs) but only after a significant amount of waiting period. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a Harry Potter fan, look, go ahead and like it. I'm not trying to, I'm not saying it's bad or anything. (laughs) I just don't know about it and I'm fine not knowing about it. I like when people are into a thing. I think that's good. I'm not one of those guys. I feel as if, I mean, why am I so defensive? It's just not your thing. It's not my thing. I'm glad it's that only, it's a thing. It's only recently been my thing. I only recently seen, found out. I understand. I feel like it's it's a it's a it's a very um, uh, well thought out thing that is very involved and it offers a lot to people. Yes. And it's an immersive world and fantastic. And you hate magic. I don't hate magic. Well, it's fake. Just wizards and wizards. Hey, a sport was born out of it. Quidditch. I, I called a live Quidditch game at Comic-Con. True story. Oh, Let Lord. me stop you right there. <laughs> Go ahead. Unless these people are fucking flying, I don't want to hear about it. It's not, that's not a sport. Can I lie to you about what I saw that day? Sure. There are people flying all over the place, oh, Well, Paul. this sounds good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... Flying is impossible unless you're in a plane. (laughs) We will return after this break and we will reveal our location that we have procured from Sam Richardson and then we will do our improv. Don't say I didn't warn you. Spontaneous Nation will return. Hey, everyone. I think you know. I think you know by now. I'm a Dapper Dan who likes to dress up. I like to wear dress up clothes. I like to look nice. The ultimate nice looking dress up Dapper Dan clothes, a tuxedo. So don't take it from Scott Ackerman, a guy who dresses like an overgrown child. Take it from me, a person you can trust, a man you can trust about looking good. I want to talk about the black tux, the black tux. They're reinventing renting tuxedos. They use high quality crafted Italian wool suits that are available for rent online. This is this would have been considered impossible in the earliest days of tuxedo rental. <laughs> I think during the Civil War. 
you can rent a tux online. Let's say you, you got a, you got an event coming up. You need a tuxedo. You don't want to go into some dumb store. Look at their garbage. <laughs> I'm mad about it. You want to go online to the Black Tux. Here's what you do. Go to theblacktux.com. Select from complete looks or build your own. Prices start at $95. The Black Tux designs and manufactures quality crafted Italian wool suits and tuxedos for rent entirely online. How do, I don't understand. How are the, how's it supposed to fit? If you got questions like that, first of all, calm down. You're panicking. There's no need to panic. Go to their top-notch customer service team who are always on hand to lend assistance. If the fit needs a tweak, the Black Tux will do whatever it takes to fix it in time. Whatever it takes. The Black Tux will do whatever it takes to fix it in time. Now, that sounds dramatic, but it's probably just, you know, they'll adjust the clothes. Alterations, I guess. I don't know. When your event is over, just ship your tux back in the box. It came from for free. It is that easy. Come on, guys. You don't even need to have an event. Maybe you want to just be fancy. Maybe maybe you want to go out and be fancy somewhere. Come on. When your event is over, you just ship the tux back in the box that came from for free. Here's what you do. Go to theblacktux.com and experience a new way to rent. Use my promo code PFT, theblacktux.com slash PFT, and make yourself into a better you. That's not their slogan. I just made that up. Ah, fanfare for returning from an ad. Thank you, Evan. He plays that every single time, as everyone knows. <laughs> Welcome back to Spontaneity Nation. We have our location provided to us by Mr. Sam Richardson. And that location is... Hold on a second. Every goddamn time. <laughs> <laughs> Just as you know, as we tell our story, we use sound effects to move us about in time. Just three sound effects, that's all. Let's say we're moving laterally in time. Something is happening... And we want to find out what's happening at the same time, the exact same time, someplace else. A meanwhile, if you will, you will hear this cut to sound effect. Whoosh, we're over there. <laughs> Let's say we want to flash backwards in time. Someone is having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. You will hear this flash back sound effect. We're going back into the past. Let's say... We want to return from the past into the present or go into the mysterious future. You will hear this ominous flash forward sound effect. What is going to happen now? <laughs> That's the lyrics to it. <laughs> All right. And any of our improvisers can touch these buttons at any time. If you'd like to see pictures of the sound effects bu box, it's pretty cool. And Engineer Ryan made it. And it's a neat uh, physical thing. It's almost magical. Yeah, sound of effectum. So <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know why. No, no one ever seems to get tired of it. All right, here we go. And now here's our location provided to us by Sam Richardson. That location is Televangelists Studio. Televangelists Studio. We take you now to Televangelists Studio. Well, we have about 20 minutes till the broadcast. How are you feeling today, Pastor? I'm excited! Okay, uh, sa save some, save some. For finish the most of my coffee, but still have some left. <laughs> are you. Are you okay today? Feeling 100%. You're, you're sweating a great deal. It is the Lord in my skin. Breaking forth, Paul. Okay. Pa. Yeah, I, told you, I pa. know because I'm your dad. My that's dad. Right. That's right. <laughs> now listen, son. We've been working together for a real long time now. So do you. That's right. I raised you to be a preacher. We had a break. We had a brief break. Where we went our separate wheels. That's. <laughs> <laughs> that that is correct. That is Reunited on we are <laughs> under the umbrella of God. God unites us all. 
and especially unites the family. And I'm glad that once more we are together as a family. And we will not speak ever of the incident that parted us so many years ago. Son. Yes? I caught you. I seen you. You was running over to that bus full of all those women. God directed me towards those women. No, now hold on a second. Don't you bring God into this. God did not tell you to go over to that school bus full of women. I will not be a preacher anymore. I've decided to do plays and such. What? This is a scandal to the family and also to the faith. I'm going to practice. To what kind of practice? Play practice. Ain't there a word for that? Not to my knowledge. There ain't no term for practicing a play other than play practice. Mmm. Nope. Now let me tell you something, son. If you don't even know the terms of art, how am I supposed to allow you to go and waste your life pretending things? Do you know what do you know what plays are? It's a bunch of people telling lies. Well, follow God is not much different from that. Lies and such. What is it all? Just a bunch of magic. I cannot believe you said such a thing to me. I'm gonna bring your mother in here. Mother, come in here. What is it? Do you Do you hear what your son is saying? Oh, what'd you do this time, Junior? I've decided to pursue the dramatic arts. The dramatic arts, also called the satanic arts around this here household. You know, it's not allowed. <laughs> Thanks for backing me up on that one, Mother. I need to go get my beverage. <laughs> Why don't you go lie down, dear? That's a mint julep. Yeah, no, of course it is, because we're from the South. Yeah. <laughs> you go lie down. Have your mint julep lying down. Don't, oh, she's already gone. Goodbye, father. Son. I'm on my way. If you, if you do this thing, I will not talk to you. I will shut you out of my life. I will cast you out of this house, and it will be a very long time, if ever, before I see you again. But I will say this to you. Always, you can return to God. Probably won't. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. You didn't need to say that. You could have just... You could have just thought it and Ooh. left. Well, the girls are leaving. Wait for me, girls! Oh, there he goes. Oh, but then you return to God. Uh, the ladies were not interested in me, Father. Oh, is that all that came down Mainly, to? that's basically what happened. That was 17 years I ago. I asked out every single one of them. <laughs> What's that, did you say? I asked out every single one of them. They all said, no, thank you. And so you return to God 17 to years God, later. Out of rejection, mostly. And that, Okay, but, I mean, God doesn't... Well, I mean, God does care. He would rather that you return to God because you're returning to God, not because, I, you know, you didn't get any better off. I can't go on today, Father. What? I'm a fraud. I've been perpetrating it for far too long. P p people are counting on this televangelist broadcast. Well, you'll just have to find... Oh, somebody else. What? Hold on a second. I gotta answer that studio door knock. Yes, hello. Hello, Reverend St. Augustine. Hello, Pastor St. Augustine. I'm here to tell you you got five minutes where you gotta be out in front of them cameras for the show, honey. Thank you, Rudy. <laughs> Listen, Rudy. Yeah? How long you been working here at the studio? Because you predate me, but you've been here since I, since I was first here a long time ago. That's right. Well, over 30 years I've been here at the studio. Yeah, now you, you're very, you're very shriveled and stooped, and you can ba you can barely bring yourself to knock on the studio door. My daughter calls me God's question mark. <laughs> That's very cruel. Well, it's what I look like. It's fine. How sharper than a serpent's tooth to have a mean, roasty child. You're right. I'm gonna hit her next time I see her. Well, spare the rod and spoil the child, Rudy. That's right. Let me go get my stick, Ru Rudy. Yeah. We're, we're gonna need a little extra time. I'm afraid there's a bit of a crisis here in the studio. What? I said five minutes. Wouldn't it's not four to thirty seconds. Well, I could have. How am I gonna do? Wait, wait. They need more time. They need more time. They need more time. <laughs> Thank you, Rudy. You're welcome. Son, I'm gonna need you to do this televangelical broadcast today. I, I, 
I ain't going on, Father. <laughs> Son, what is it? Why? Why are you so? Why? I why told you. you. So, what is it again? I forgot. I was talking. Oh, to, I got to talking with Rudy. I'm a fraud. Oh, another knock. Oh, 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 the other studio door. Let me see who this is. Hello. Hi. I'm I'm the new intern. Oh. Oh, hello. What's your name, young miss? Clarissa. Oh. Clarissa or Larissa? Clarissa. Clarissa. But you can call me Larissa. Oh. Short for Clarissa. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Saves you. A cl- so. Is a girl. Oh. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm Clarissa. I'm the new intern. You oh. must be Pastor yeah. St. Augustine. Oh, I'm yes, really I'm, sweating now. I am, I am Reverend St. Augustine. Oh, this yes. is my son, Pastor St. Augustine. It's pouring off me. The sweat's pouring off son, me now. Son, son, why don't you go? Why don't you go take a page out of your mother's book? Go lie down there and have a mint julep oh. on, on the studio couch. I, I prepared some mint juleps just outside. Oh, you're perfect. Perfect. May, may oh, I, may, bless you. Larissa, yeah? if I may be so bold as to call you Larissa, may, may I speak to you privately for just Absolutely. for a moment? Listen, mm-hmm. listen, girl. You better be careful around my son. He's he's having a perilous crisis of faith right now. Oh, my. Well, I don't mean no harm. I just came in here in my smart little tube skirt and my little tight button-up top because I'm a professional. You Well, you are you are pushing the boundaries of professional attire, I must say. Oh. You know, we like we like the women around here dressed just like it, real baggy stuff. I noticed that. Yeah. I didn't. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize the dress code was as such. Well, what didn't anybody say it to you at your job interview? Well, all right. This is uh, says here. Your name is. Uh, it says Clarissa, but the C is in per- parens. Oh, it's uh, it's an optional. Which, Larissa's short. For well, uh, okay. Um, well, a uh, little. Any questions about how we run here? It's pretty, we're a family station. That's important to yeah, know. We just we, want to make sure that you're comfortable in your work. Yeah, thank you, Diane. Oh well, you know, so far so good. Um, is there anything that I need to know? Any sort of. Well, rules I or couldn't help but notice uh, Diane and I both that you're not so much wearing a shirt as a series of band aids. Yeah, which yeah. is that how you plan on dressing every day? Well, um, this is sort of my more you know uptight sort of look, so I can loosen up for sure. Well, it seems highly irregular. Our code generally, uh, we like bag. We we tend to use bag things. Yeah. you know, like uh, bushy skirts. I'm very or, into the DIY, so I can make some bags into a, a halter top. Well, may, maybe so. Uh, not so much that is just take a series of paper bags like you get at a grocery yeah. store, and tape them together into just sort of an amorphous <laughs> lump, and get inside of it so we can just see your head. That would be that would be nice. It's a suggestion. I think I know what you're saying. I'll. I'll, okay, yeah, I'll wear... We can't, we can't force you to do it. No. We can only suggest that you... Right. Exactly. Well, I'll go buy some bags, and I'll, I'll make a nice outfit out of it. You say you need some bags for work? Yeah, apparently they don't like my band-aid top. How, how many bags do you need? What you trying to do here? Well, uh, if I make a halter top and some short shorts or... Short shorts, jeez, listen to me, putting on airs. How about a tube skirt? <laughs> you gonna make a tube skirt out of these bags? Yeah, so I, I suppose with my slender frame, uh, I, I suppose I need three, four? All right, three, four bags. What else you need here at the fabric store? Uh, some ribbon. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Shall I put it on your account? Yes, please. You oh. know I'm going to be back for them buttons later. I know, Lorenzi. You are my favorite customer at the fabric store. Thanks, Amber. Hold my cigarette while I blow my nose. <laughs> well, now, I don't know if this will do. Mm-hmm. I know you made, You told me that you made your clothing out of bags. This but is what I thought they said. I know. I think they meant it to be more bag-like in appearance rather than the materials. Oh, that's strange. You know what you remind me of? Hmm. And I don't know what your previous employment was. You remind me of a magician's assistant I once saw. Oh, um, <clears throat> no. I, 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 magic? Who? Not me. Because you know magic is the devil's tool. Yes, of course. It's all from Satan. uh, Yes. You do know that? Yes, I do. Okay. 
I don't know why I'm asking because you said you do know it, but I'm going to ask you one more time. What you do know magic is from Satan, right? Magic is from Satan. Yeah, you're repeating my words back to me. It seems like we all ship shape here. But... Father! No, oh, son. I'm a hook in from the man high up. What did you say to me, Junior? I'm a hook in from man high up. Oh, you woke, woken from your nap? Oh, I'm a staring at a girl. I, yes, I, Larissa. I see that you're doing it. I wish that you wouldn't do it because it's not good to do and you're doing it right in front of me. Oh. Also, oh. I suppose it's making her feel uncomfortable. Oh, no, I'm fine. Oh, well, thank God, because in, my, in our religion, of course, we don't really care much oh. about Larissa? women's feelings. <laughs> Larissa. It's mostly just their ears vessels. <laughs> Might I uh, uh, interest you in a, some sort of a tuna sandwich or such in our cafeteria? Oh, my, I should be doing that for you. Uh, it would be my pleasure. Oh, well, all right then. Okay, now, you know we was given a five-minute warning that the show's going to start. Uh, Hold on, that's got to be Rudy. Is there anybody here in this hallway? Rudy, you made oh, it back. Oh, there you are, Reverend St. Augustine, Pastor St. Augustine, Clarissa. Now, I'm here to tell you, I, I can't tongue you, Dad, the time you asked for What did you say, Rudy? <laughs> Just having a hard time with the people real, in this studio. I really am. Yeah. I really am. It's the acoustics in here. <laughs> acoustics is the devil's megaphone. That's right, well, Rudy. Thank you. You uh, you said to give you more, like four and a half, and you said more than five minutes. We I asked for you, five minutes. That's gave correct. Gave you five minutes. Now yes. you got, you done, you got, you done, you got, you, you done, you got. <laughs> You, know, you got 30 seconds. Oh, so you say the five minutes has passed? Yeah. Oh. oh, I forgot that time would continue to move forward. Father? Yes, yes, son. I will go on under one and only one condition. What is that condition, Junior? That Larissa be at my side. Well, <gasps> on the te- on the on, on the televangelical broadcast. broadcast. Oh, I'm well, glad I'm I am promoting you, young lady. Oh, oh. You are now a partner in the televangeli. What? Oh, I am honored. I would, I would love to. Now hold on, there, girl. What? We have never taken a partner in the televangeli before. No, but I am staying true, uh, as I have for many years, uh, to our model: men for others, for God, for interns. For happiness. Now, we going to have to vote on this at the council, and you know that's a fact. So I'm going to ask Rudy for more time. For people. I, I forgot you still doing the places, motto. That's right. For things. Forever. EVA. For and we ever. Make it, we make it fun at the end. All right. Now, hold on a second. Let me get some more time from Rudy. I'm and almost then, finished. Uh, <laughs> you finished For her. once and for all. Hey, Rudy. Yeah. Hey, Rudy, yeah. we're going to need some more time. we got to be with the council, so delay the broadcast by, let's say, half hour. All right, we'll, we'll delay that broadcast. We've got a whole year. Oh, God, love him. I hope he lives that long. All right. <laughs> now, everybody, get in the van. We're going to go to see the council. Welcome. Welcome to the council meeting. We are the <laughs> Belevangelies. Mm-hmm. And we mm-hmm. have called this special session at the request of Reverend uh, St. Augustine. Yes, thank you very much, Councilman Jeffers. Councilman Jaspers. I hope this is important. I was working on a puzzle. It. <laughs> what, if I, if I may be so bold, what kind of puzzle was it, Councilman Jaff- Jaspers? Well, it was two kittens, but I don't know what they're doing because I haven't finished the middle yet. You haven't looked at the box? I st- no, that's cheating. You are very wise, very wise. Reverend, our time is very valuable. Yes. No, of we would uh, appreciate you of being course forthright. It is. Of course it is. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm here with, <clears throat> I'm here with my son, uh, the pastor St. Augustine Jr. Mm. Son, please, not in front of the council. And of course, our new employee, Clarissa. Sorry, was that uh, Clarissa with a C? Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, a- Officially, but it's Larissa for sure, if you feel so inclined. Oh, I'm, I'm for what I'm inclined to 
I like to work for it. I'm going to call you Clarissa. <laughs> That's quite all right. Now, <laughs> council members, I, I, I do apologize. We are under a bit of a time crunch because uh, we are supposed to be doing our broadcast, you know, the televangelical broadcast. Uh, according to our, uh, the calendar here on my iPhone, it should be happening right now. Mm-hmm. Well, it should be. We asked for more time. Got a reminder. I, I put it at 15 minutes before, mm-hmm. then a second at five minutes before, and mm-hmm. both of those it looks like have got off. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm flattered, of course, that you would remind yourself to watch our broadcast. In fact, he, he, he called me to let me know it was going to be on television, interrupted the puzzle once. Yeah. I said, I told you, I told you, Ted, it's puzzle time. I got to find out what those darn cats are up to. does not like it when his puzzles get interrupted. I, I had to start all over. <laughs> well, I, I hope that this will be a, 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 a good enough reason to interrupt a puzzle. By the way, I'm Ted for short. I know you call me may, Jeffries. But, may I call you Ted? No, you may not. Oh, Councilman Jeffers. Yeah. Um, Councilman Jaspers. Mm-hmm. The 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 notion the motion before you is, um, well we have a new employee this uh, Clarissa or Larissa for short, and my son, the pastor Saint Augustine is very uh, is very taken with her. Oh, the motion of your notion seems to imply there's a little lotion in the ocean. <laughs> I, got, I, I just I got it right away. I don't know why I said I just. Got I do not that. take I your meaning. I, I do not take your meaning. I'm sorry. That's all the commotion. Mm-hmm. It has a fifth one on the end there. Right. Um. Did y'all hear what I said? No. I, mean, I thought another one. Guys. Must, must be questioning their rhymes. devotion. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? High five. <laughs> so, y'all y'all are and, so funny. There it is. You sort of heard what I said. <laughs> I, yeah. I said I just. <laughs> well, what it comes uh, down to is that his son has asked me to join him on the show, and well. He seems to have a problem with it, but I would really love it. Well, we have never had, as you well know, we've never had a partner in the televangelist before. Well, I, for what? I think there was a lot of emotion in her devotion. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're funny. You stop. are a cut up. I, I gotta watch out for you. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't. Listen, Reverend, we are men for others, for God. Mm-hmm. That's for, right. for interns. For interns. Interns and things. things. For people. People. Mm-hmm. For places. places. Forever. Forever. Forever and ever. ever. EVA. That's right. Spell EVA. For, for one and for all. For now and forever. Mm-hmm. That's right. And it's not our job to tell you how to run your broadcast. That's right. We're simply a council. Yep. We do puzzles. Yep. We we, we say rhymes. Mm-hmm. We We're sh- here more as a, a figurehead of sorts. Yeah. So y'all just uh, throwing it back on me? Well, well what, would, what would Jesus do? <laughs> right? Oh, Jesus. What would Jesus do? <laughs> He's oh. got it on a pencil. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's, on his table. I, I, I looked at it, and I was like, oh, I should say that. And I did, that and it worked out. That was good time, yeah. and y'all should have a show your own. I would watch oh. it. Reverend, I will, I will say this. You know, follow your heart. Mm-hmm. Don't tear things apart. If you have to throw a dart. To protect your art. Be smart. Okay, y'all. Use a shopping cart. Y'all, y'all is what? Okay. If you want a pastry, I'm a, I'm a have call, a fruit. I'm gonna call you on that one. I'm sorry. Use a shopping cart for what? <laughs> well, he for was just shopping. Yeah. Right, but how does this apply to? You sh- just just turned into shopping in the aisle of options. Yeah. Well, in thank, the world. thank you. Okay, thank now Larissa. Larissa, Larissa thank, thank, you. thank you. Yeah. She gets I it. I get Larissa, it. Larissa, yes. Um, you, I can't help myself. Yeah. I'm gonna grab her now. Oh, son! Oh. Whoa, I've this never... is most unseemly. Oh, in front of the council. outburst. Oh, councilman, you see what I'm dealing with here. We don't have time for these sorts of outbursts. No. You, you take your. That's your... the problem. It's time consuming. <laughs> That's the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> Not that it's it's so against God that he would uh, say such a horrible thing. Well. Nah, it's mostly we just yeah. we got okay. some things to y'all, do. Y'all as a council, not the best. Can I just say that? Uh, we appreciate your feedback. Yes, thank All you. Right. Well, thanks for nothing, I guess. Back to the studio. Rudy, just you give us, just give us, please. Whole half hour. I know, just give us. I think you get in the car and I thought I better vamp. Just give us a few more I seconds. Just please. went out and did crowd work for thirty minutes. Rudy, I know, and everyone is furious. They Will you please? <laughs> please you, you are like roasting people left and well. right. You sir, you look like you're Italian. What? I'm, I'm not Italian. Hey, everybody, look at this Italian. What? Are you not getting a, some spaghetti? Not He's Italian. Clearly not Italian. Who is? Why does he keep attacking everyone? I'm Portuguese. You, oh, Portuguese. Yeah. That's the Italy of the West of Europe. 
Everybody, uh, y'all, y'all listen now. Now I'd like to read uh, this handwritten list of 200 outdated racial slurs I know. Uh, Isn't this supposed to be a religious program? We're here for God. Number, for others. For men. Number one. For, for in, people. For interns. Night prancers. <laughs> Night prancers. <laughs> number two. I think he's funny. Yay, Rudy. Inside employees. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're not that. even going to throw out any Snickers or anything? <laughs> number four. Strunks. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> number... It did not go well. No, it did not go well, Rudy. I you barely, are... barely got 50 into the list before <laughs> they blew Oh, me that's out. what you meant, that it did not go well. You didn't get to do your, your yeah. list of outdated slurs. I had, a, had another 150 left. All right. Well, Rudy, just give us, honest to God, just give us 10 more seconds. All right. Honest to God. All right. God. All right, Reverend. I'll count them over here. All right. Reverend, I think you should put me out there. I know you're against it. I know you got your reservations, but maybe it's something new that we could use to shake up the world. Shake it. <laughs> shake shake it. Like, it. Look at me. I'm just shaking. Oh, shake I'm like shaking a... with the Lord in me. Jun- junior. Oh, Reverend Saint Augustine, I hate to bother you, but it's been ten seconds <laughs> from the time you said literally ten seconds. So you did say literally. Rudy, thank you for holding me to that. You're, You're keeping welcome. me honest in this uh, dishonest world. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Crazy. All right, son, you leave me no choice. Clarissa, you have certainly wormed your way into my boy's heart in such a very fast manner. Oh. And it didn't even seem like it was something he's trying to do. But once he brought up the idea, you just went right along with it. So I guess y'all going on TV together to be televangely people. Oh. For God! Not yet. Hold on a second. Oh. We got to get into We'll walk All into right. the studio in front Fair of the camera. Fair enough. Fair enough. Welcome to the God Hour, an hour devoted to God and all the stuff he wants to say to you. Yes, Lord. Please welcome your televangelical host, the Reverend Junior St. Augustine Pastor, and someone else. Reverend Junior, we love you. We love you, Reverend. Uh, First of all, I'd like to... Oh, sometimes I forget how I speak. Praise Jesus! <laughs> Praise him! There's a woman next to me named uh, Harissa. Who is she? Praise he found him, praise Lord. He found his voice. Sometimes uh, when God uh, heaves his majestic uh, bosoms. Sounds in, good! In yeah. your direction, it is incumbent upon you to grab those bosoms. Get him, get him, Daisy! <laughs> Sometimes God himself wants you to place your cheeks between those bosoms. Give them a minute. And breathe them. This God's make love. Un- making me uncomfortable. Yep. I've pu- I put forth before you my inspiration to... Rudy, yeah. I mean... Uh, but this is going terrible. This is terrible. It's getting very dirty. I feel like I should get back out there with my list. No, Rudy, yeah. that is the last thing. You stay uh-huh. in the control room with me. All right. And and be ready to pre- hit, hit that kill switch. We're going to cut to a commercial, okay? All right. If we have- God wants you to use a riding crop, then you use a riding crop. Oh, boy. I, that was probably, probably should have gone to commercial yeah, then. Let's, we'll cut to commercial. Ready? Okay, wait, wait till I say now, Rudy. All right. And you pull the G-string up with your teeth, and before you know it, you are tasting God's love. Amen! Okay, this is not good. I feel, I'm starting to feel like we really should go to a commercial. I feel like you're coming around the horn on that one. <laughs> I just want I just want to make love to you. Really? I just want I wish all these people weren't here right now, Larissa. I, I just wanna uh put our bodies on top of each other's bodies. We are both God's instruments. All right. Let us show the people what it means. All right. I can't believe I came all the way from Portugal for this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now they now he's getting heckled. Yep. This this is not good. Is what terrible. do you think, Rudy? Should I cut to the commercial? I, I want to, but my elbow's locked. <laughs> so, wait, so you can't just you can't just move your forearm down to I where s- that button is. Suppose I could lean. Can you push it with the other hand? I'm gonna try. Okay. Oh, Jesus Lord! Well, we've made love. 
on television. We've shared, for the first time in my life, I feel like I, I know who I am. And I know who you are too. And now everyone knows who we both are. I can see their butts. <laughs> they, pa, uh, people of the congregation. Hail Satan! You've come on a strange journey, Wells, today. What a journey we needed to take. For the Lord sometimes shows you a path you've not yet traveled. This is my first time being with a woman, and I'd like to now tell you in great detail about everything I experienced during the last few minutes. Well, Larissa, Jr., there's no easy way to say this, but the ratings are through the roof. This was our most successful televangelical broadcast, I think because there was a live sex act on television. And it was through God that this happened. Oof. My work here is done. What? Smoke bomb! Whoa! She, she said smoke bomb Whoa. and threw a smoke bomb! She disappeared! She used oh. magic! Whoa. Where'd she go? Well, she's gone. Well, uh, perhaps. Did it happen, Father? Did it really happen? Uh, it, it really happened. Like, look, you can see it playing on the monitor. There's you oh. having sex with a woman on television. Oh, look at that. Oh. This is supposed to be like televised church, and you're doing a... Everyone liked it, though. I mean, I was I was troubled that the congregation seemed to seemed to get too into it, and maybe it's we've lost our way. But Ooh, Father, I just received a message on my my AOL messenger. So what what does it say? It says that they're convening a special meeting of the council. We're we're meant to go there uh, forthwith oh, well, and immediately. Well, all right, <laughs> Rudy, Rudy, we gotta go to the council. All right, well, the commercial breaks over in thirty seconds, so oh. we gotta get back out there for hour two of the broadcast. Oh, I thought. Oh, <laughs> well, this is much longer broadcast no, we're, than I. I think we was all under the impression that it was it was over a while ago. Oh, you know what? I have next week's schedule in front of me. Okay, I'm so Rudy. Sorry. Rudy, you keep doing you, Rudy. I'm going to go back to sleep in the broom closet. Okay, we're off to see the council. Councilman Jeffers. Reverend. The Councilman Pastor. Jaspers. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and who is this new councilwoman? Hello. <laughs> she seems very confident and self assured. I'm from New York. <laughs> well, that, that explains it. And I've called this council meeting together because. We want to put your televangelism television program on national network. Uh -huh. Oh, we've only been local so far. Hey, oh, big surprise! Look at those eyes. <laughs> what a he burger and some fries. He didn't know. Still doing the right. He's this a man on the charming. rise. This one's real charming. Please. But now, did y'all see the part where there was a live sex act on the that show? That was the best part. That was the only part I saw. I heard so many people in the office cry, Jesus Christ! <laughs> But, it made me want to shout, watching all that in and out. But now, y'all know that... That's a euphemism. Yeah, no, I got it. It's also a movie with Kevin Clyde. I love are, that movie. Are you thinking Inside Out? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but now, y'all y'all should know that my, my son, the, the pastor, St. Augustine Jr., his sex act partner, she has left literally vanished in a puff of smoke. Using Satan's magic. Ah. This is perfect because that means we can have a different girl every week. That's See, amazing, yeah. I, I'm a Satanist, but a Levain Satanist, which means I don't believe in the concept of a devil as much as a hedonism. Wait a second. A hedonistic code by which is, we lead our lives. Is all of y'all Satanists? Well, we don't like to bit. put labels yeah. on it. It but sounds we, bad. We seek pleasure and we don't deny pleasure to others and we demand that we live our lives the way we want to live them. That's the Levain Satanist. If that's Satanist what you code. call a Satanist, then uh, technically, yes, in quotations, we yeah. are. Our house Satanist. colors are silver and. <laughs> Green. Juice. Juice. Looks mm -hmm. like somebody's. Uh, Looking for a Crucianus curse coming his way. <laughs> he just seems like he doesn't get it. He seems he like he doesn't, he doesn't, doesn't get know. it. He doesn't was confused. Look at him. Turns out my, my entire uh, career has been a lie. I didn't realize that I was working for Satanists. And, um... Father? Yes, son? I refuse to be in the throes of love with anyone other than Larissa. 
I denounce this program, and I will not perform. Son, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm happy that uh, that you had a sex act on te- television for love, at least, and that uh, and that you refused to be a part of this. And maybe there's still a spark of God in you somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. There is. So, counsel. Mm-hmm. Counsel. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. My son and I, we reject Please. you. What? Get get thee behind us, you what? Satan's. Well, hold on. Just before you say no, hundred percent. Uh, Pastor, we have this catalog of Russian bikini models. We were going to bring them in one after the other. Yeah, just, just take a quick look. It won't going. take more than just 30 seconds. Just leap through it. See if there's anything that, that sparks your interest. So. Can we have a sidebar for a second, boys? Mm-hmm. Hey. Wait, let's what? go in the secret chamber. Okay. So, um, you think if, the, hear us? if the kid doesn't want, I don't know. Okay. But if the kid right. doesn't want to do it, yeah. let's get the dad to do it. Oh, that's a great he idea. He looks like he really needs you to get what, some, you know, right? He's probably, probably going to be like, what? Oh, you know yeah. No, he'll act all surprised. Yeah, he'll act all surprised. <laughs> but then he'll be like, well, I guess oh. for God, you know, make yeah. it for God. Oh, here they come. They're uh, back in. Uh, we've made a uh, very solemn decision. Yeah, so Reverend Pastor, Pastor Reverend, we, uh, we uh, humbly accept, uh, albeit with a great, uh, you know, displeasure, your son's refusal. But uh, we've, we've got a. Plan B, if you will. Oh, is that so? Uh, when, when things get bad and people aren't glad, we turn to the dad. Yeah, that's me. That's right. Do you that under- is. Do you understand what you he's follow saying? What no, to, I do. I do. I understand exactly what he's saying. Yeah. Huh? Well, no. So you turn to the dad. I'm the dad, and You're now, the dad. now what? Well, that's what he's. I'm returning to you. So. We would like you to take over as host of the... To host the televangelical program? Mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. above wants you mm-hmm. to make love. Oh, so you want me to be the person yeah. making love to Russian bikini models every week? Mm-hmm. What? Oh, he he did it. He did it. Oh, I should have made it a bet. I should have made it a bet. I should have made it a bet. I'm real bad. I could have been rich. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Bud. Oh, uh, I will only do this on one condition. What is that? We got to move the show to Ghana. <laughs> that is affordable. I like the way yeah, you think, Reverend. So out of left field. I mean, who would have thought all of a sudden? Well, I mean, I know you're from Ghana. I'm from Ghana. So you originally. Go, we go back and forth a lot, but this I is I stay just in England crazy. most of the time, but yeah, let's do that. Oh. I like it. Years of being such a devout Christian, everyone. Was so aware of your principles, and and really, it's just the location is all it took. That's really all it took. I was wow. only here because it seemed like you know this the is a good place. goes with it. Yeah, <laughs> but like all my life, I just always wanted to have <laughs> have televised sex in Ghana with Russians. Well, ho ho ho! It's off to Ghana we go. <laughs> and it all happened <laughs> in a place called Televangelist Studio. Here we are, June twenty seventh. <laughs> Annie Savage, what do you want to tell people about? Where can they find you online? Annie underscore Savage on the Twitters. I probably have a podcast. You probably do. Baby is sleeping. Mm-hmm. And Any second now. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know, it's just it's become a fun game for some people. They really, they honestly, right? somebody posted like, I'm so glad that nothing's happened yet because I like tuning in and I like I like checking. Hearing you plug your podcast that still hasn't happened. I'm like, well, all right. Somebody's getting something out of it. <laughs> maybe that's all. Maybe that's what it was supposed to be the whole time. It was a ghost. <laughs> Victor, I'm what about so, you? I'm so surprised we're done. You know how you used to take a pause? And <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, it's weird. I told you beforehand. <laughs> I, that was not, I that did was tell you. I did. Oh, uh, fun. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, so what do you want to tell right. people about? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, Puppets and Shit. Mm-hmm. That's the name of my YouTube channel. It's Puppets, the letter N, A-S-H-I-T. If you go there and you subscribe, then you will see the many videos that I make. That's right. And in June, there's going to be some on there. So there you go. Yeah. Well, there's some on there right now. There's a bunch on there. So there might be even newer ones. Newer by, ones, by the more time content. This. It's all about lots of content. There you go. This is fun. Good. Good plug. Good plug. 
<laughs> no, you ha- shut up. Ha- yeah, I'll get uh, to it. Don't okay. worry. I'll take care of it. <laughs> ha- Hal? Uh, yes? What do you want to tell? Um, please listen to my podcast with fellow Thrilly Adventure alum. Please. Mark Eglarity. We got this please with Mark and Hal. Please listen to it. We got this with Mark and Hal. Both Annie and Paul have been on it. You've heard. So listen to the rest. Go get the back catalog. It's all on MaximumFun.org. Uh, a lot of fun conversation. A lot of good guests. Yes. And yes. go to HalLublin.com. I've got a show coming up on July 8th at the Nerd Belt Showroom. Nerd, Nerd showroom. Belt? Nerd Belt. I am also, <laughs> I'm, I caught Annie's allergies. Damn it. I knew if you put me across the table Nerd from belt. her. <laughs> We go to Dirt Bell. You, you have to say it with that voice. Yeah. I'm um, doing a live show with my friend Joseph Scrimshaw called Head Fantastic. Cannon. So come see that. Fantastic. HowLublin.com. There oh. we go. Evan Schletter. Evan Schletter.com. He is yep. Evan Schletter on all the platforms. Go to Evan Schletter.com. Get Evan Schletter's albums because Evan Schletter is only the best. As for me, I'm P.F. Tompkins on all the things. Um, I have a bunch of uh, uh, live dates and things like that sometimes. <laughs> I realize they're in my future, but in your past. But go to pauleftompkins.com slash live, and you will see uh, where I'm going to be. And we do Spontaneous Nation Live every, the first Saturday of every month at Largo at the Cornet. You can get tickets for the shows there at pauleftompkins.com slash live or largo-la.com. No You Shut Up is Thursdays at 10 on Fusion. Editor's note, the television program, No You Shut Up, has been canceled. You can see our previous episodes up online at YouTube. Just go to YouTube, No You Shut Up. You can see full episodes of the show online. But Thursdays at 10 p.m. on Fusion. It's a funny show that you should check out. Many of your Spontaneous Nation favorites are members of the cast, and many of our guests uh, turn up on that show as well as guests. There are guests all over the place. Um... I think that is it. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the show. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in presenti. Thanks again to Books for sponsoring today's show. Books flowers are grown at eco-friendly farms on the side of a volcano. Seriously, a volcano. The blooms are larger and the colors are more vibrant. Books prices start at just 40 bucks. No upcharges, no extra fees. Even delivery is absolutely free when you register with the Books. Save 20% at B-O-U-Q-S dot com with promo code PFT. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Adam Sachs, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to Earwolf.com 